be destroyed by security services. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to this Dadrow stream having a look at the new enhancement pack mod for the Midland Mainline. We will be starting at 22.30 in around about 8 minutes time. Please have your drinks and light refreshments ready. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Mind the gap.
This is your five minute warning, ladies and gentlemen, five minute warning. This stream will be starting in five minutes time. Please have your drinks and light refreshments ready and remain seated throughout the entire performance. Five minutes to the start of the stream. Passengers are reminded that smoking is prohibited at all stations and on all train services. This includes e-cigarettes. is a safety announcement. It is not permitted to cycle, skateboard, or rollerblade within the station building.
Good evening, everybody. How are we all doing tonight? So great to be here once again. Two streams in one week. It's got to be good. It's got to be a first as well. Two streams in one week. An advertised stream. A stream that I said I was going to do and I am actually doing as well. That's definitely got to be a first. Who have we got in tonight? Grape Juice, Pig and Bob, Crazy Praise, Eliza and a West French Level Crossing. Uh, Artie doing the moderating. Thank you very much. Officially Yan doing moderating as well. Leo Lowe, Pig and Bob, Laser Jet. Uh, to mention but a few. Uh, Master Rail Driver, hello. Wookie390, hello. Sorry if I haven't mentioned your name. You are all very welcome here. Great to have you. So, we are going to be playing the middle of mainline today, and you may have seen there is an unofficial community mod that has been released for this route. I have put a link in the description to that. It's completely free of charge, but it is an unofficial mod, um, so therefore it's not supported by Dovetail. It hasn't broke my game. My game appears to be working just fine. And it adds um, new foliage, new grass, new textures, uh, realistic branding, and various other bits and bobs to, to the route, and makes it look very, very pretty. Debbie walking around behind me there makes it look very pretty and very nice indeed and, and very playable So we're gonna jump in we're gonna have a run on the uh, the 158 and the HST on there um, And just have a look at what, what's been changed So before we jump into the video I've got to tell you as always all the views and opinions expressed have been are solely my own may not reflect those of any companies I may be employed by or associated with of course We're also gonna be playing locomotive location livery today Let's play locomotive livery location Today's picture has been sent in by Matty Meerkat. Matty Meerkat. And we'll get around, get into our first round of that very, very soon. So, without further ado, let's press the right button. That always helps. Let's jump into the game. Train Team World 3. And we're going to load up Middle and Main Line. So, I think we'll start the stream with a, a high speed run. And then we'll do something in the 158. So we'll, we'll definitely do both. We might, if we get time, do something in the 37 as well. But we're um, we're mainly focused on the, the high-speed train in the 158. Mm. Uh, let's do an 8 plus 2. Now you can see how often I actually play the game by the number of services that I have completed. I'm afraid to say there's, there's not many that I have actually done. Um, there we go. 1 Delta 4-2. 14-42. St Pancras to Nottingham. Drive this service from Leicester to Nottingham. We'll load that one up um, 15th of January. Let's put it in the summer. Let's keep the dynamic weather on. Let's press get started. Yeah, Lewis makes a really good point there. You can't get this mod on Xbox or PlayStation. It is PC only, I'm afraid. Um, so if you are playing on console, you, you can't get this, this unofficial mod, um, which is a little bit of a shame. Uh... Alcoholic, the night shift last night wasn't as painful as I was expecting it to be. It, it, it wasn't too bad, actually. That is my last shift. I am now clear for two and a bit weeks from work. Um, so I'm, I'm venturing off on holiday for a couple of weeks next week. So I will, uh, I will be disappearing, um, disappearing from YouTube for a couple of weeks. Okay, so here we are. We are in the HST. I believe... The position in the cab has been altered, the actual driving position. So I, I have had a brief look through the notes about what has changed and what hasn't um, changed. But I don't have the notes in front of me, so I'm kind of just going by what I remember from, from the original version of the game. So, let's get started. Uh, the AWS button is over here, if I remember rightly, isn't it? There we go. Um, DSD in the normal position as well. Perfect. Okay, key on. <coughs> Into neutral, we've got a green, unlocked doors on the left. So we are calling at East Midlands Parkway and Nottingham only. Let's jump into the outside view. Uh, put some headlights on the front of that train there. And we'll have a quick scoot around the station just to sort of see what's been updated. So first thing we can see is the realistic branding patch there. We've got the network rail branding, the Samaritans branding on the van, um, which looks really nice. Just gives it that extra layer of immersion in my opinion. So let me know if you want the game audio up or down guys, we can absolutely do that, not a problem either way. Um, I think you probably want it down a bit because this route is quite loud with all the diesel traction. Um, yeah, realistic branding all the way around which is nice. Subway advert, we've got the Vodafone advert, Burger King. Yeah, really liking that. Just having the realistic branding does add so much to the game, so much more immersion. I'm, I am definitely a fan of that. Okay, we got a green. We are locked doors. 
let's get going and see what we can find en route. Stop at location, East Midlands Parkway. So yes, we've still got no working GSMR on the HST, which is a little bit of a shame. Uh, let's get the brakes off into forward and hopefully... we wait for the brake pipe to charge up before we take power, otherwise we're powering against the brakes, which we don't really want to be doing. Is it going to work? Got the Valenta engine there as well, lovely. So let's catch up with the chat and see what is going on. Uh, Wookie 390, I wish they had expanded the middle of mainline down to London St Pancras. It's certainly got a lot of potential, um, this route, and I, I would like to see Skyhook develop it further. Uh, and expand it. So you can see on the containers as we come out there, you got all that foliage which looks lovely and those buffer stops. And again, you got the one containers there um, and the network rail vans with the realistic branding. And it, th this route is just really, really immersive. You've also got, I believe, um, new track text, new track textures going on. Uh, Matty Meerkat, good evening. We are using your locomotive location livery picture tonight. SJA, beer going to my head already. Um, I'm, I'm dad rail mug, cup of tea today. No beer for me. No beer for me tonight. Um, holiday mode activated. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it is fully activated. But I haven't got beer, so it's not that activated. Uh, Ellie Saunders looks so much better. I, I think it really does. I think the the mod has made a big, big difference. Uh, there is a link in the description below as well, so if you do want to go and check it out for yourself, it's completely free of charge. Really easy to install as well. I was quite pleased. I mean, it's literally just copy and paste the pack files into, into Trainsim World, and it works. So really, really easy to mod it. Um, Brian Laughlin, the graphics change looks super real. Really positive feedback on this pack at the moment. I'm not sure I'm a fan of this new driving position. So someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the driving position has been changed. It could be me, it could be my imagination, but it just feels a little bit kind of not right. It, we feel a little bit too high uh, for my liking. So, 16 miles down to East Midlands Parkway, shall we have our first round of that very popular game? You know the one. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. So, if you haven't seen this game before, guys, post your numbers in the chat now between 1 and 25. I will pick the third number that comes up on my screen, and you will soon get the hang of it. Hey, typical Nathan, I'm good, thank you. How are you? So we're good for 110 at the moment, rising to 120 in a moment. Uh, Jamie, thank you. Yes, it has been changed. Okay, so third number on our screen is Alcoholic with number 11. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Okay, guys, so here's how this is going to work. I'm going to give you box number 11. You've got 10 seconds to guess the locomotive or multiple unit location and livery of what you see underneath. Here we go. Oh, that's a good starting one. Now, it's it's traditional on Dad Rouse stream for someone to get it as soon as the first box is revealed. So have you any ideas? Uh, Max, uh, Max 1319 is the GSMR active. You've got the GSMR GB display on there, but none of the buttons are actually um, active on this. It, they do work on the 158. Um, it's sort of very basic functionality, but on the 158, the GSMR does have some, some degree of functionality. Uh, typical name from the new HST driving position is unrealistic because drivers don't sit that high up. I think it depends on the individual driver. I personally quite like sitting high up when I'm driving. 
Um, but I think in terms of the simulator and playing the game, uh, I don't like the driving position particularly because I can't see the controls. I like to be able to see the controls. Um, but if you're actually driving, I mean, you don't. You can sort of just look down to see the controls and you can physically feel the handles. So from a simulator perspective, I'm not a fan of this driving position, I must say. Uh, what are we reckoning? So our first guest comes from Laserjet. And Laserjet says it's a 158. Northern Princess Productions has also gone 158. Wookie 390 has gone 777. Master Rail Driver 158. Grape Juice has gone for a 350 or a 450. Crazy Plays has gone for a 159. Lots of love for 158s and 159s there. Jack HST Productions has gone for a 317 at Kings Lynn. And Gregory Allen has gone down south with a 313 at Seven Oaks. Uh, Andy, yes, I do believe it does have DRA. Um, just about there. So if we put the DRA in, that should cut the power. Yeah, you can see the amps are coming back down there. So DRA is functional. And in order to get power back in, we have to shut the power off. And on we go. It's 11 miles to East Midlands Parkway. If you know the stations that we're speeding through en route, then do shout them out. I've, uh, I have absolutely no route knowledge on this bit of track at all. Just getting a little bit power in. We're on a slight downhill gradient, actually, so I think we'll... Uh, we'll shut off and see what it does, see if it's going to pick up or not. Um... SJA, I'd like the driving position a tad lower, but bearing in mind I'm a simmer and my views might be different if I drove the sim in real life. Yeah, no, def yeah, that's exactly what I was saying, SJA, about if I'm driving a train in real life, I like to sit quite high up, but um, definitely sort of lower down in the sim so I can see everything clearly, everything that's going on. Got the branding there as well, you've got the um, DB Schenker wagons. And we did have the uh, the Mendip quarry wagons as well, the JNAs. Uh, typical Nathan, did they change anything on the 158? We will go for a ride in the 158 in a few minutes, um, typical Nathan, once we finish this run. Uh, like I say, I have posted a link to the mod in the description, and it's got the complete change log on there. And I am really sorry. I, I give absolute 100% credit to, to the devs of this mod. Um, but I haven't done my homework, and I haven't written down the names of the devs. So, 100% credit to the devs. Your work is linked in the description. Right, let's keep a bit of power in. Uh, David, lighting effects do look far better than the original release. I believe there has been some updates to the way some of the sounds work as well, so we'll sort of uh, we'll judge that as we go along. Uh, Artie says, Richard, you should totally go check the Discord at some point. Uh, yeah, we can do that. We can do that. Hey, Artie, standing in front of a Greater Anglia. It looks like a flirt. Although I could be wrong. If you want to post anything, guys, we're in the live stream pictures page. You'll find an invitation link to our Discord server in the description below. So we're good for 125, 120 going up to 125, um, 6.9 miles to go. Let's get a bit of power and see if we can get that speed up. Yeah, SJI, I do believe it, they are new track textures, which do look much better. Um... AW1120, do you think I should buy the Thameslink 700? I've played the South Eastern High Speed DLC and I liked it. I think it's a really good addition to the route. It's a really nice train to drive. It's not without its flaws. I have done a I have done a video on it on the channel, so do go and check that out. It's not without its flaws. I think, it's, but for the price they're charging, I think it's about thirteen pounds. Um, it's yeah, it's worth it. It does add a lot to the game. It's a nice train to drive. Uh, RT, no, it's a 720, not a flirt. My apologies. I don't know my 720s from my flirts. I wouldn't notice a flirt if I saw it, though. 
my wife is well and truly safe. <laughs> Got a green. Uh, the horn is back to front. A loud. Okay, well it's it is as it's marked up. So your low is down and your high is up. Do you mean on the what the one five eight? Um, Lewis, this train only goes to power five, not any further. Should they add one to number six? Uh, I, I assume it only goes to power notch five in real life, which is why they've done it. Hey, Free Seasons Eyes, how are we doing? Great to have you here. We'll see if we can get a decent stop at Parkway. That'll be that'll be an absolute miracle if we do. Uh, SJ Dabra, I totally agree. The 700 is an amazing drive in sim terms. Lovely view. It, it certainly does. It certainly does. Typical Nathan wants to see we are speeding. Let's get some brake in. Typical Nathan wants to see turbo stars. I would love to see turbo stars. So one of the routes I would love to see in game is the East Coastway extended to Ashford uh, with the 170. So Eastbourne to Ashford extension. Right, two yellows. Let's drop a little bit of brake in. Pen P, stop flirting. We, we we had this discussion a little while ago about Stadler trains. You've got the Stadler... I think there's a Stadler kiss and a Stadler flirt. So we just surmise that the next Stadler would be called the Stadler married. Then the Stadler divorced. Then the Stadler broke. So... <laughs> Two yellow, so we release the brake. We got the train down to about 60. So we're still well and truly in control. We're not going to accelerate, obviously, because we are still running on cautionary aspects. 1.4 miles to East Midlands Parkway. I am loving the foliage that's on here now. So they have used the foliage from the Peak Forest route. So if you want the nice foliage, you do need to own the Peak Forest. Um, that is part of the mod. But it is, it's very nice indeed. One yellow. Two yellows. Stepped up to two yellows. 0 0.9 miles from the station. So there's no point in accelerating. We are, if I remember rightly, an 8 plus 2. Uh, Jack, do you sign Eastbourne to Ashford in real life? Yeah, I, I sign all the way from Brighton to Ashford in real life, Jack. Guy who oh, guy who gains on a microwave. Imagine the Stadler Virgin. I wouldn't ride a Stadler Virgin. It doesn't go all the way. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I've got to do that again. I wouldn't ride the Stadler Virgin. It doesn't go all the way. Right, East Midlands Parkway. Um, we're actually more or less on time, which is unusual. Hey, I've driven 100 miles in this train. Um, okay, that's probably quite a fast approach. Let's get a little bit of break in. So the textures on the cooling towers here at East Midlands Parkway have been changed. Um, as has the smog coming out the top. So we will scoot off and have a quick look at that um, as our passengers are loading. Do we need a bit more brake? I think that's doing well. I think that's doing well. And we're just going to take the brake off as we're coming to a stand. You always want to stop on a rising brake if you can. That way you avoid that kind of uh sort of thing going on. And unlocking doors on the left-hand side there. Okay, let's jump out. We've got our network rail van. So there's been a few updates around here. We seem to have the, the barriers in the car park. And the car park's a little bit more occupied. Um, the textures on the cooling towers see if we can get up there, have been altered, and they do look really, really nice. As well, of course, as all the, the um, actual branding on the station. So I did see some advertisement boards back down this way. Uh, no, they've gone. 
But yeah, the modelling on the station is generally really nice. I do wonder about the station signs though. Whether there should be some branding on the station signs. And whether that font is the correct size. The font... The font doesn't look quite right. I would imagine in real life that's probably big. I could be completely wrong, but it just doesn't seem right to me. Yeah, we go. We've got our Starbucks rewards. We've got East Midlands trains and Burger King. I'm loving the signs there as well. East Midlands Parkway Station. I don't know if that was original or not, but that, that's really nice. Hey, the British Ace, how are we doing? I um, I actually found out about this mod because of you, Joe. So thank you very much for that. It's it certainly adds a lot to the game. It's it's very nice indeed. Right, we're off to Nottingham. Brakes released. Let's go. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, we got the 158 coming in on the slow line there as well. Absolutely loving that. Now we're coming into, I believe this is called, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe this is called Red Hill Tunnel that we're now coming into. Typical name from Richard. When will Rivet Games put the real 385s in for Edinburgh to Glasgow? They said that in March to April and it still hasn't came yet. There was an update to Edinburgh to Glasgow. They, they did tweak some of the sounds on the 385. Um, I've not heard anything from Rivet for quite a while, to be honest with you. Um, I don't really want to speculate over what's gone on there. But yeah, I, I haven't heard anything from Rivet for, for quite a long time. That is absolutely beautiful. So we're going round to Nottingham. Speed limit's currently 70, we've got an 80 coming up. Typical Nathan, the brakes don't make that weird noise when releasing the brakes in real life. I can't say I've noticed, to be perfectly honest. Gregory Allen, when are you doing Romney Hive and Tim Church? I'm, I'm away for two weeks, so tonight will be my last stream. We are going to be doing a Discord event on... Sunday night we're going to be doing a uh, Euro Truck Simulator Convoy um, over on Discord Stages on Sunday evening. Um, but other than that, this will be my last stream for a couple of weeks because I'm I'm off to sunny places for a couple of weeks. Um, but Romney Hive and Dimchurch, I want to do that but I want to make sure that's done properly because it's a really, really great game on Roblox. So it, it will happen, it will happen. <laughs> Jack, the, oblig the oblig ob obligatory RHDR comment. I can't speak today. Right, two yellows. Let's get a little bit of break in. Just stepped up to a green. I'm still going to get a little bit of break in because the fact we've gone two yellows to green would suggest that we're catching something up. Um, so I'm going to get the speed down to about 70, 65, 70. Uh, we got another green there, so... We're just going to coast. If we get green on the next one as well, we'll accelerate away again. Because uh, it means the train in front's got away a little bit. Uh, Artie says, get another LLL in soon. Yeah, go on then. Go on then, Artie. You pulled it. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. 
Locomotive livery location. Uh, Lawrence Adams, if they did bring out Fenchurch Street to Shoebrine S DLC, I can pretend my girlfriend is bringing me coffee and lunch at Benfleet Station. I would love to see the CTC network. I've said that before. I, I think you could do the whole network, Fenchurch Street to Shoebrine S and South End. Um, it wouldn't be too hard to do the 357 because it, effectively it's just an Electrostar. And then if you've got the 357 model, you might as well do a Turbo Star as well. Right, let's get a little bit of power in because the signals have started clearing up. Locomotive livery location. Um, or AW1120. You are the third number on my screen. And you would like number nine. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. You know the drill, guys. I'll give you box number nine. Ten seconds, please, for that locomotive livery and location. Oh, hello. That's a good reveal. Any idea what that might be? That is a pretty decent reveal, that one. I stand by what I say. There is a locomotive livery location out there for everybody. So just because you don't get, just because you don't get the first one or you don't get the second one, there is absolutely one of these out there for you. You will at some point get one. So we've got a 50 coming up in two miles. We're on the level at the moment, running on greens. Uh, we'll just keep the speed as it is. It's doing all right. It's doing all right. What are we reckoning? Um, Grape Juice 116 has gone Mersey Rail. Uh, Lewis has gone Class 508 going somewhere. Uh, Rich Peach has gone 507. Douglas Holloway has gone 507. Wookie 390 has gone 508. Lawrence Adams has gone 315. Interesting bit of variation there. Nobody thinking it's a 158 anymore. Uh, Demon Eddie, hello Richie. Just a quick question. Why are there sometimes stock car markers outside of stations? Uh, normally that's for shunt movements. So it could be for shunt movements or it could be for clearing points. So if a train is to shunt out of a platform or past a junction, you'll have stop car markers so the driver knows where to stop the train in order to change ends uh, to head back along a different route. Sometimes, although rare, sometimes you'll get them like after you've gone... So you've got a speed limit where the speed limit goes up. You might get stop car markers so the driver knows when their train's clear of a speed restriction. That's not so common, but you do get it. But yet yeah, normally it's because... Um, there's sidings or there's a shunt move or some other reason for the driver to know to need to know when they're clear um, Right, we are going to be speeding. Let's get some brakes in for this upcoming 50 uh, Wiki 90508 at Liverpool South Parkway Are we going to make it down for the 50? Uh, uh, not quite But it's not too bad. It's not tea and biscuits One yellow. Got a 25 coming up. What platform have we got? Number six. The theatre box and the signals. I don't know if they've been updated, but they look really nice. They're really clear. They stand out nicely, um, which is one of my been one of my biggest complaints previously about Train Sim World is the signals not being able to stand, not being able to be seen. Oh, so that annoyingly, that. Oh no, it's okay, the arrow's pointing to the left. I was going to say that is what we call a running dummy and that is in the on position, but the arrow was pointing to the left indicating that it applied um, to the line to the left. If that had been our signal, that should have been showing proceed. As we approach Nottingham, then we'll jump in a 158 and go for a ride. 15 coming into the station, Andy, nice wrist trigger commentary, thank you very much. There's a lot of drivers don't like risk trigger commentary driving or don't use it. I'm I'm personally a fan of it. I it is risk triggered, so I, I use it as and when I feel that I need to. But yeah, for me personally, in, in high risk situations, it does definitely work. Uh, Rob signals were updated. Yes, thank you very much, Rob. It's it's certainly a very worthy update. It has brought the route up to a really really high standard. 
Um, I'd, I'd love to see this kind of treatment given to other routes in the game. I really would. It's very, very nice indeed. Richard, try and guard the 158. Has he got guard mode on the 158? So red ahead with a little bit over the stop car mark. Stopping on a rising brake. We have got a red signal, so we're going to put our brakes into full service. Reverse it to neutral. We're going to set our DRA and then open the doors on the left-hand side. And go for a little, little wander around the station. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah, so I did notice when we come in, actually. Oh, if we can get across. I did notice when we come in, you've now got these lights and these kind of cables and stuff on the floor in the um, in the six foot between the platforms, which is really good. Really, really liking that. Nice touch with the knocked over bin there as well. And the grip bins, I believe, yeah, have now got correct signage on them. That was one of the things that I noticed uh, in the update as well. Um... The 158 does have a guards panel. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Unload passengers. Is the scenario going to end properly? Are we going to get a score? Are we going to get a score? Um, that train sim guy, this en enhancement pack is truly amazing and takes the route to the next level. It certainly does, my friend. It certainly does. I, I was watching your stream on it the other day. It's, it's very, very good. Okay, what's going on? The game appears to have broke. Uh, British Ace, have a look at the stations in the dark hours. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, we'll, we'll do a daytime run in the 158, and then we'll do like the short run um, in the dark, so we can have a look at the, the, the night lighting. That, that is a good idea. Um, let's try locking the doors and unlocking the doors. The game appears to have crashed. Wait until 15, 12, and then it will finish. Are we running that early? Oh, we are. Okay, well, whilst we're waiting for that to finish, we might as well do locomotive livery location again. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Typical name from Richard. Are you early? That wasn't supposed to happen. Never. <laughs> Absolutely never. Absolutely never. What have we got? Let's let's have some numbers. Let's have some numbers up. Uh, Rob, promise you we didn't mod the gameplay. Ah, oh, Rob, are you are you one of the the very talented people that mod that done the mod? I did say earlier on in the stream that I was very sorry for not crediting. I I, I have put a link to the mod um, in the description, but I I didn't note down the people's names so. If you are one of the very talented people that modded it, Rob, thank you very much. It is certainly really good. And uh, please do, the, do this on the upper routes as well. It's fantastic. Um, Alcoholic, you are the third one on my screen once again. It's ending now with number 18. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Where are we? 18. Going to give you number 18, guys. 10 seconds for that Locomotive Livery and that location if you can. <laughs> Could that be the network rail freeway? Just, just put it in there. You never know. And we got a gold medal. Fan dabby dozy. We're going to take that. Uh, RT, right, I'm going to close my laptop, which means I won't see the chat anymore. Trust you all to behave in my absence. No worries, bud. I'll catch up with you in the staff chat group on, um, on Discord. But yeah, best of luck with tomorrow. Right, let's go back to the main menu and let's load up the 158. Uh, right, okay, to the trains. Choose a route, middle and main line. Timetable 158. So we'll do a full run on the 158. Um, drive this from Leicester to Nottingham. 
and then we can do one of the shorter runs after that in the dark. I think I think that'll do, and that'll see us about right for finishing time. Then um, that'll be perfect. So we'll keep, yeah, ten twenty nine. That'll do. Let's go. Uh, let's start off foggy and see what we can get with the dynamic weather. Let's let's give it a little little bit of interest. Um, what are we going for? Master Rail Driver, Mersey Rail Class Five One Eight, Connor Young. Uh, on platform 16, I think I'm reading the wrong comment there. Um, crazy Dash, I don't know why they find the vine boom so funny. Uh, Grape Juice 116, I'm confused if it's a network rail train or a Mersey rail train. Uh, Jack HST Productions, I don't remember the network rail 313 having a picture of a random woman on the side. Here we go, we're in the 158. Which is a a lovely train at the best of times. I, I am definitely a fan of the 158. Even in real life, I like 158s. 158s, 159s. Proper traction, in my opinion. Right, we'll get our safety systems in as we normally do. And let's see if we can remember how to drive this thing. Um, key off. Let's set some headlights to day. Um, we've still got a red signal, so we'll keep it in brake step free for the minute. And our DRA is set. That is correct. Not very bright, that DRA, but it's set. GSMR radio, we're going to turn that on. Unfortunately, we don't have to set this up. It is already preset, but never mind. We, we have some degree of functionality, um, which I'm definitely all for. And we're unlocking doors on the left-hand side. I cannot remember where the door unlock buttons are on this. Um, coach lighting on, that'll be good. Door unlock, unlock on the left. LW Rail, hello! Eliza, everybody loves a 158. Uh, typical day from Richard. After driving the 158, can you guard it for the return? Uh, we won't do a complete return journey, but we can... I, I will have a little look at the guarding feature on there. <coughs> typical day from you forgot the headlights. Uh, I've put them to off, haven't I? There we go, day headlight. The signal's showing up really, really nicely ahead of us there. Uh, Locked doors. Is that my signal that's still at danger? Possibly not. My signal might just be round the corner. Uh, let's lock the doors and see what happens. Jack HST, pacers are proper traction. I like a pacer. I I'm a fan of pacers. We do get two on the buzzer as well here automatically, which is um, one of the updates that was put in. Um... A little while ago, which is which is very very nice. I'm 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 all for that. Uh, DRA off. So I can't see my starting signal. So I've got to assume that my starting signal is going to be at danger. If it is that signal there, I'm I'm assuming that signal there applies to the light you know, on the right hand side of us. So we'll go nice and slow. Yeah, we go. We've got a green. We've got a green and we have a position 4 route indicator. In real life, the train would only be dispatched. The guards would need to be able to see the signal or they need to be able to see an off indicator or something on the platform. Um, they wouldn't dispatch you not knowing what the signal aspect is. I love the horn sounds on that. Darth Vader horn. It's got to be done. It's got to be done. Typical name from Richard. Do drivers have to memorise every signal number along the route? Absolutely not. That would be a complete and utter nightmare. No, you, you definitely don't have to do that. Um, you need to know what signal box is controlling each area along the route. and You need to know where the changeover points are. Um, so if you ever need to contact a signaler and the GSMR is not working, you know... Uh, who to phone and what signal to speak to, but you don't need to know the number of every single every single signal. That's a tongue twister. Um, certain signals that you get stopped at a lot, you will just get to know the numbers of them. Um, that this is where not having route knowledge doesn't help. Twenty five across there. Um, yeah, so signals you get stopped at all the time, you will just learn the numbers naturally. But yeah, it's not a requirement to know all the signal numbers. 
Crazy Dust functional off indicators would be nice in train sim worlds. Uh, we, we have them in SCR on British Railways. So, yeah. Do we not have them in train sim world? I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure I've seen them at some point. So we are off to Syston. My pronunciations are going to be dreadful. So we are stopping at Syston, Silby, Barrow upon Saw, Loughborough, East Midlands Parkway, Beeston, um, and Nottingham at 11.22. Uh, crazy day. I'm, I'm not going to take... I, I mean, I was speeding, but... It, it wasn't speeding... It wasn't like a Lumo speed, was it, or like a, a a West Coast Railways kind of speeding. It was a it was a dad rail speed. I mean, all speeding is bad. Let's just put that out there. But I think we can sweep that one under the carpet. It, it, you know, what's, what's ten miles an hour between myself and ninety two viewers? I, I think we can get away with that. So we're on a slight downhill gradient, just shutting off there, letting the train take the strain. Uh, crazy place. Are we also doing a run down to Derby? Uh, so where are we going on this one? We're doing Leicester to Nottingham. Did we not do Derby on the previous? No, we didn't, did we? We'll, we will do Derby then. We'll do Derby on a night run um, because we do, uh, as per Joe British Ace's advice, we do want to check it out. Um, in the dark as well. Have a look at that. Typical Nathan, good question. Richard, what if there was a station with no off indicator, no visible signal, nothing, and the guard doesn't know the aspect? So if the guard can't see the aspect, they could phone it, and you can see it from the front. They can phone you up and ask you what it is um, on the cab to cab radio. Alternatively, they're just going to walk along the platform until they can see it. Uh, some locations you might have platform staff, platform dispatch staff, who can see the signal. Um, but they're, they're never going to dispatch you unless they know what the aspect is. Because dispatching you against a red is it's an operational incident for the platform staff and the conductor. Um, and, it's, and it also it puts you at risk of having a spad. So that's, that's really not going to happen. Or, or shouldn't happen, I should say. Richard, put on the tea and biscuit screen. Do you know what, Nathan? Just for you. Just for you. There you go. Tea and biscuits with the manager. Crazy place. What do you usually do during a signal failure? Depends on the nature of the signal failure, crazy. Um, so the signalling system is designed to fail safe. That is, it should fail safe. So, for example, the signal that we're approaching at the moment, if that signal had failed, if it had no, uh, no illumination on it, I would treat that as a danger aspect so if I went past that signal it's got no illumination on it I'd immediately apply the emergency brakes and contact the signaler uh, advise the signaler and then take further instructions however if the signal fails the signal behind it the one we've just gone past that should automatically revert to red so that that would hold itself at red because the next signal had failed um, it, it purely depends on the nature of the signalling failure. So if it's just one signal that's failed, um, the signal is going to authorise you to pass that at danger. If it's multiple signals, um, then you could introduce something called temporary block working or uh, emergency special working, um, depending on the, the area that you're in. So yeah, lo lots of different procedures you can carry out with that. Uh, Wookie 390 ultimately, if you have a spad, it's... There'll always be something called root cause analysis, which is discover the root cause of the incident. But nine times out of ten, the buck's going to stop with the driver. If if your if the signalling system is working correctly and you haven't had an adverse change of aspect, if you had a, if you have a spad, it's going to be your fault as the driver um, for not not driving to the conditions. Even if even if the conductor has given you two on the bell or the platform staff have dispatched you against a red, it's it's ultimately it's still your responsibility. You're you're the one in charge of the train. So trying to keep me braking nice and light here, trying to use brake step one and two only as we come in. Um, that's a short platform. We're going to need some a bit more brake. The brakes on the 158 are not great. We are stopping on a rising 
Stopping on a rising break, though. We got it to 25 before we stopped. And doors on the right-hand side. Hey, that scene looks a bit familiar. Where have I seen that before? <laughs> okay, passengers getting off the wrong side at the back there. That's, um... Did anyone just see that? That's interesting. I'm not sure that's supposed to happen. So yeah, again, with the realistic branding, it's... It is very nice. So we do have a bit of a guard feature going on here, which I would love to see on, on all guarded routes. So... You can see the passenger doors have closed, except that set. So that is where our AI guard is potentially working. The guards panel is open. HST bombing past us. And we get two on the buzzer! No, we don't. We get three on the buzzer. Um, that should be two on the buzzer, but... Give two backs. Find the right button. Hey, Monty Burns Gaming. Hello. How are we doing? Okay, why are we not moving? Let's take the brakes off. That always helps. We are off to Silby Station, platform number two. Um, typical day from Richard. What happened if the signal in front of you was green and immediately changes to red and you spad? So that would be a category B spad or potentially a category C. Uh, basically, it's not driver error. So that, that would be a spad due to either a fault with the signalling equipment or signaller's error. So you would not be responsible for that. That would not be your fault. You would still absolutely slam your emergency brakes on stop the train and you would report that. Um, and then you'd act on the signaller's instructions. So the signaller will probably say, oh yeah, sorry about that. And then give you permission to carry on. Or um, you, you, you'd act to their instructions most definitely. You'd also need to complete what's known as a signalling irregularity form, an RT3185 form. Why is the speed limit 20 coming out of there? That's a bit odd. Um, yeah, you'd also need to complete a signalling irregularity form, um, and you do that at the time you're speaking to the signaller. So one of the things we have to carry in our bag is a stock of RT3185 signalling irregularity forms, and you need to do that at, at the time. Typical A from Richard, most drivers give the buzzer back once they've already started moving at 5 miles an hour. It's down to the individual driver, There's, it doesn't matter whether you do it before you start moving or when you start moving. I think what generally happens is, is most of the time you'll get the two on the bell, you take the brakes off, take power and then the, the next thing you do will be the buzzer. So yeah, it, it, it absolutely doesn't matter, there's no right or wrong way of doing that as long as you repeat it back. Uh, East Midlands Railway fan, unrealistic for free buzzes, yeah free buzzes. I have not done bell buzzer communication for a very long time. I believe three was draw forward. I think six is set back and three is draw forward. Um, but I would need to get my rule book out and double check that because now I drive freight trains. We, we don't really deal with bell buzzer communication anymore. Everything's done by radio and hand signal. So we've got 1.7 miles to go. Approaching 70 miles an hour. Yeah, I can't praise those signals enough. They're looking really nice. The, the textures on those are, are, are lovely. Typical Nathan, what happens if you forget to buzz back to the guard? Uh, nothing, really. It's it's in the rule book to repeat it back, and it's common courtesy to repeat it back, but it, it's one of those things. It's, it's not really an operational incident. If you don't do it, it's not the end of the world at all. Uh, Jack, uh, RT3185, it's a rail track. RT is for rail track, 3185 form. Um, there's a whole stock of forms with different numbers. Some of them we use as drivers, some of them we don't. Some of them apply to signalers, um, points operators, hand signalers. There's, there's just a whole stock of forms. Um, the newer forms that we use for like emergency special working are called um, uh, uh, November, November Romeo NR forms for network rail, but the older forms are all RT forms, rail track forms. Uh, East Midlands Railway, it's set back. There we go. Yeah, I haven't done bell buzzer for quite a long time. So free, free on the buzzer is set back. Crazy place. What if the guard doesn't buzz to you? If the guard doesn't buzz, you don't go anywhere crazy. Uh, the two on the bell is your authority to start moving the train. So if you haven't got two on the buzzer, then, then you're absolutely not going anywhere. 
You remain at a stand. Hey, JCO2, what, what do I need tea and biscuits for this time? I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I don't think. The brakes really are shocking on this. Okay, this could be tea and biscuits, though. That was all right in the end. We'll take that. We'll take that. <laughs> Unlock doors. Unlock on the left. That wasn't too bad. I'm, I'm taking that. Uh, Jack, no, you don't need to remember all the form numbers. There's, there's only a, a very small amount that we use as, as drivers. But the RT3185 is, is probably your most commonly used form. Um, and that's one we have to carry around with us in our bag. So uh, RT3185 is... Yeah, you will you will never forget that one. You will never forget it. Um, okay, whilst we are waiting for passengers to load, which has just finished, let's get those numbers in the chat for locomotive location livery. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Billy Dubs, that's a good question. What's your favourite line to play in Train Scene World 3? So if you're talking about dedicated Train Scene World 3 routes, um, South East and High Speed Extended. I know that originally came out for Train Scene World 2. But I would say that is a Train Scene World free route now because it obviously it was updated uh, and extended. So that that is definitely got to be it. Uh, Brighton Mainline close second. Um, off we go. Barrow upon is that Barrow upon Saw or Barrow upon Saw? Saw. There, there. Someone tell me how to pronounce it. Crazy Dash, I fell down because you hit the e-brake. I'm suing. I've never heard of that in the UK, of, of passengers suing a railway company for braking too harsh. I, I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but I've, I've, I've never heard of it. Never heard of it happening. JCO2, just answering uh, what would happen if the guard abuses the buzzer. If I had a guard doing that, I obviously don't know, you know, I don't know if the guard's in trouble, I don't know what's happening, I don't know what, what the guard's trying to communicate to me. So if that was happening, I'd be stopping my train and sort of going and finding out what's happened. You know, I don't know if this, the, the guard could be having a seizure, there could be all sorts of trouble. So, yeah. G generally speaking, you're not going to get that unless something's, something's wrong somewhere. Or unless there's a fault with the buzzer as well, which is which is always a possibility. Okay, locomotive livery location. Uh, Rowan, you are there with the third one on my screen. You have chosen... Number 13. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Dead centre, guys. Box number 13. 10 seconds. For locomotive Livery. And location if you can. Let me know your thoughts. Any ideas on the location there, guys? I don't think I've seen anyone with a right location guess yet. Yeah, you can see now if I jump in the outside view, we got the Mendip Rail Limited branding uh, on the wagons, which is really good. Not having the freight layers on this route is something that I think we they, they need to put the freight layers in. I, th I know it's been spoken about a few times, but we, we definitely do need the freight layers in. There's so much freight potential on here. Typical name from Richard, do you watch the Spad Risk videos on YouTube? I've, I've seen most of them as part of the as part of my initial training. Um, and there are something called red videos. You might have seen some of, some of them on YouTube. They come out quite often. Um, and we watch those as part of our safety briefs. I've actually got one at the moment which I need to watch. Uh, typical name from 507 at Birkenhead North. East Midlands Railway Fan 507. I really need to remember how bad the brakes are on this. I'm, d I'm not learning. Stopping on a rising brake, though, which is good practice. Unlocking doors on the left-hand side. Uh, what do we got? Northern Princess Productions, if you get two on the buzzer as you are driving, the buzzer is dodgy or your guard needs help. No, definitely. If the buzzer goes off while I'm driving along... Um, then I'm going to stop the train and find out what's going on for sure. 
Crazy place. Mersey Rail 507508 on the Wirral line somewhere. Connor Young 507. Jack HT Productions surprised the passengers on a certain blue liveried ECML TOC didn't sue after what happened to them on Peterborough at high speed. I, I yeah, I, I don't know that they haven't, um, to be completely honest with you. Couldn't possibly comment. Um, King ET, I am 100% with you. I really want to see the Brighton Mainline get to Train Scene World free updates as it's a brilliant route. And when they are updating it, let's have a Brighton Mainline extension like Horsham to Blackfriars or something. And give us the 700 on it as well. That We, we need that. We need that. We've got a green. We are off to Loughborough. Luga Baruga. Full power in our little 158. Uh, Firasp says 508 at Brumbra Rake. JCOT was wondering why it took about three years to close the doors on the 158. Now I know. Now I know it's the guard door. Yeah, it's a nice little feature. I really like the fact that you get that buzz buzz. It's a shame you still have to open and close the doors yourself, but the fact you do get the, the, the buzz buzz and you can buzz back is is a nice a nice feature. I'm definitely for that. Uh, Monty Burns Gaming. My dad once fell over on a train after it suddenly set off, so I imagine someone probably has sued a train operator for harsh braking accelerating. Yeah, like I say, Monty Burns Gaming, the time I've been on the railway, I've never heard of it. I'm not saying it's never happened, but I, I've, I've certainly never heard of it happening. Luga Baruga. Hey, Owen Hensley, welcome to Level 1 Membership. Thank you very much, bud. That's very generous of you. Crazy place. Just give us East Coastway merge into London Bratfries, rest of South London network, like in Train Sim Classic. Sutton Loop. The Sutton Loop is my absolute nemesis of a line. I absolutely hate driving the Sutton Loop. There's not many routes I dislike, but the Sutton Loop, I, I can't even tell you why. I think it's just long and slow, but the Sutton Loop is a route that in real life I just, ah, oh, it's a drag. If someone told me that I was going to take that off my route card and I never had to drive it again, I, I would jump for joy. <laughs> Wiki 390 would like to see West Coast Mainline or East Coast Mainline. Yeah, definitely. I think West Coast Mainline, I personally I prefer the West Coast Mainline over the East. That's just probably because I've, I've spent more hours traveling on the West than I have the East. It's, it's purely that. Nothing um, nothing more, nothing less than, than personal preference. But yeah, I, I think with the trains we've got in game, it'd be pretty good. But then of course, if you've done the East Coast Mainline, you can put the 700 on it. Did I just see a 50? I'm really not paying much attention to my driving. Let's get some brakes in. I know someone's going to moan at me for speeding. So before someone complains at me for speeding, we'll put that one up. Uh, Norton Prince of Productions adds something good there. We deal with the odd bit of personal injury in my job. It goes really high straight away. Most people don't want to go straight to court and just want to get it sorted. Uh, 800 yards to Loughborough, 46 mile an hour was still good. Rob, I think a whistle at stations for local hauled passenger trains would add a lot of atmosphere, especially somewhere like Paddington. I think when you're playing rail tour services or when you've just passed a rail tour, having enthusiasts on the end of the platform with tripods and stuff would be a really nice touch. Because in real life, if you're driving along in a train, you know if there's a rail tour or something out and about because you will see enthusiasts absolutely everywhere. You, you just know. Could be a good stop, it could be a good stop, could be a good stop, could be a good stop. A little bit over, but nothing too bad. And we'll just release the brakes to 25% before we stop. And we're two on the two doors on the left hand side. Uh, 
King ET, do you think we'll get a surprise UK route in September for the yearly big update they do each year? Um, I don't know is the answer. I would imagine so. The last UK route we had released was Glossop. Um, yeah, I, I suspect we probably will. I suspect we probably will get another UK route this year. I don't think anything's been announced officially yet. Um, there, there is talk. And again, I, I, at this point, I genuinely don't know. But there, there is talk. There is speculation about Train Sim World 4. Um, but yeah, I, I've seen it on Facebook groups and people saying it's definitely coming and this, that and the other. And there's been leaks and everything. So kind of, you know, make of that what you will. But who knows? Who knows? I don't think anything's been announced officially yet. Hey, Connor. Yeah, I'm good, my friend. How are you doing? We are off to East Midlands Parkway in 6.4 miles. Line speed is 40, rising to 75. <laughs> JCO2, too busy D being deafened by the Perkins to notice you're overspeeding. Beautiful. Let's, let's race the HST. I don't think we've got a chance in this. <laughs> JC, I don't think it's a Perkins. It's either a Perkins or a Cummings. I thought it was a Perkins. Uh, Wiki 390, no beans to spill, I'm afraid. I, I, I genuinely don't know. I, I have no information at all. Um... Yeah, I, I, I gen genuinely, on this occasion, I genuinely don't have anything to tell you. There's, I know nothing. I know nothing. Crazy plays. I'd like the North London line, Goblin and West London line, for Train Sim World with a 378 and 710. West London would be a good one because you could link that into the Brighton Main line again, couldn't you? And that would give you much more freight potential because most of the freight on the Brighton Main line from New Haven, Arding Lies, so, so on and so forth, um, Crawley, Purley, that all goes up the West London line up towards Wilston. So I think that would be a good one to do. Where's this line speed going up? Why is it 40 for so long? It just seems a bit weird. I don't know if that's how it is in real life or not, but it just, just seems a little bit weird. Uh, England ball. I wish there were more countries in Tracing World 3 than UK, USA and Germany. The only one not from those countries is Marcel to Avignon. Uh, we got a couple of Swiss routes. We've got Lurs and Sersi, and I think the... Um, is it the Arosa line? I think might be Switzerland or Sweden or Austria. Yeah, crazy dash there. Lurs and Sersi and the Arosa line. Have we not got, got, got a Canadian route in game as well? I'm to be fair, when it comes to stuff that's not English stuff, I, I'm I'm pretty bad, so. We can see if that HST is still at East Midlands Parkway when we get there. We might just catch the back of it pulling out. Jack, have you ever driven on the East Rinsley line via Upper Wallingham? Regularly, Jack. Um, especially during the, the Railhead treatment train season. So one, one of the duties I do is the um, Free Whiskey 90 Sussex Railhead treatment train, uh, which covers East Grinstead, um and Uckfield line. So yeah, I, I do that one regularly in the autumn. So we're good for 75. What's the maximum speed of a 158? Is it 90? Yeah, 90 it says up there. Uh, yeah, Oakville Subdivision is a Canadian one as well. And of course, yeah, Eliza says we've got LGV um, ported to Train Scene World 3. It's a Train Scene World 2 route. I, ha I have got LGV. I haven't done it on stream. Um, maybe we could do that on stream because it's TVM, isn't it? So I kind of know how TVM works. Uh, typical name from Richard. Why do passenger drivers sometimes give dirty looks to enthusiasts? It's one of those things. But some people who drive trains have... 
on the railway, just because people work on the railway doesn't necessarily mean they've got a, they've got an interesting train. Some people do it because it's a job, because you know pe people go to work. I'm sure a lot of people that work in Tesco's are not really passionate about stocking shelves and, and serving people at checkouts. I mean, some of them may well be, but I, I'm sure most of them aren't. They they go there because they've got families to feed. And there's a lot of there's, there's a lot of people on the railway that are enthusiasts that love their job, that love the railway. But there's also a lot of people that are not. And those sorts of people, you know people from all walks of life isn't it and sometimes being an enthusiast can be frowned upon a little bit sometimes they don't like enthusiasts because they don't get it you know like yeah me personally if I'm out driving I always wave or blow my horn to enthusiasts I think it's good you're out doing what you love you're enjoying your hobby get out there and do it Right, 2.2 miles to East Midlands Parkway. Do you reckon we got time for another round of locomotive location? I reckon we have. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Uh, Tornado 119, hello, how are you doing? Great to have you here. We are still running on greens, which is lovely. So I am going on my first ever rail tour tomorrow. Woo! I've got class 50 for traction. I am going on a staff charter train tomorrow, which should be interesting. Um, getting on at Stratford and going down to Paynton for the day. Um... There are no other trains on the network. There's an RMT strike. So, well, there are limited other trains on the network. 50 warning. So, yeah, that, that's it's going to be my first ever rail tour tomorrow. Two yellows. Let's get some brakes in. What are we reckoning numbers-wise? Grape juice. You're the third one number on my screen. You have chosen the same number as Wookiee 390, which is number 17. We will just get this train stopped at East Midlands Parkway and we will do a reveal on box number 17. The last signal was two yellows. Speed's coming down quite nicely. Five hundred yards to the station. Remembering this time that the brakes are absolutely atrocious. There's our 50 restriction. Last signal was two yellows. We have caught the HST up. And we are two for the two. And we're expecting one yellow on this signal. Uh, we have got a green. AWS said we had a cautionary aspect, but I assume it must have just stepped up. And uh, the HST is just pulling out. Oh no, my apologies. We do have one yellow. We've got the, the signal on the ground there. I did not spot that until the last minute. There you go. That's a classic example there of reading across to the signal. So I had taken that signal um, that's just reverted back to danger as mine. But in fact, it was this one. So your root knowledge is gonna you're gonna know that signal's there because of your root knowledge. But there's a real, real possibility there. If you're coming onto this one at danger, and then you see this one green, there's a real possibility that you could take that signal as yours, take power, and then end up spadding. Um, so it's something to be aware of. Okay, guys, let's do it. Let's play locomotive livery location. So we're gonna go with box number 17. 10 seconds, guys, for that locomotive livery. And if you can, the location. <laughs> know your thoughts. I don't think anyone has got the right location yet. What boxes do you need to reveal that location? Any ideas? Uh, Tornado 119, Dadrow, how do drivers know where stations are, what speed it is if they miss the board? That is 100% down to your route knowledge. We are running well early, what have I done? That is 100% down to your route knowledge, so... If you think about when you you drive a car or if you don't drive when you walk a route 
regularly enough, you're going to know, so say you, you say from your house to the shops, you're going to know on that route, you're going to know where all the road crossings are. You're going to know, if you walk it regularly, you'll probably know where the litter bins are, where the phone boxes are, where the shops are, where the, where the pedestrian crossings are. You might even know the names of the roads. You're going to know what the speed limits are. You, you're going to get to know all that information because you go over the route constantly. So when you drive a car, you, you drive on line of sight. So you need to be able to, when you drive a car, you can always react to what you can see ahead of you. So you can see a traffic light that's changed to red. You can stop in time. You can see um, a junction coming up. Whereas when you drive a train, you're not driving on line of sight. You need to have route knowledge. You need to know where the next signal is. You need to know where the station is. You're not relying on, on the line side signage. That's all got to be in your head. So part of your learning process, you're going to go out and you're actually going to learn these routes. So you're going to spend time in the cab with another driver you could spend time looking at maps looking at videos and you are just going to learn where the signals are you're going to learn where the stations are learn where you need to put the brake in you're going to learn what the speed limits are names of junctions names of tunnels controlling signalers all that stuff is in your head the boards on the track are purely reminder boards all, all that information is, is you're going to keep that in your head you're going to need to learn that in order to do your driving um, like I say, the, the, the trackside signage is purely for reminder purposes. You are, you're going to need to have that knowledge in your head. So signal stepped up to two yellows. We have got about 30 seconds before we can shut the doors. Train doors will close 30 seconds prior to departure. That's how we're getting around that one. Um, what are we reckoning? Uh, England Ball says Liverpool South Parkway. Kevin Graham says 50758 at Omskirk. Guess. Tornado 119 Mersey Rail. Uh, Rob... Dawlish Seafront completed now too. Oh, okay. Uh, Wookie 390, 507 at Kirkdale. We have got two yellows. Let's go. So leaving on adverse signals, we're not going to take full power. We don't want to take full power. Um forget what the signal aspect is then run the risk of having a spad so that's showing two yellow so we're just going to take i've got power notch free in generally speaking if you're running if you're departing a station on one yellow you're only going to take maximum 50 percent power jco2 says hi mum rail she's reverted back to the kitchen she can't hear you uh tornado says mersey rail 508 4.5 miles to Beeston. Still got a 40 mile an hour restriction there as well. Um, going up to 17, 0.8 miles. Last signal was two yellows. So we do something now called um, target fixing and focusing. So because the last signal was two yellows, you're now in a high risk element of driving. So it'd be quite easy now to become distracted and forget what your last signal aspect was, especially as we're pulling out of a station and we are we are accelerating. Normally when you encounter adverse signals, you're not accelerating towards them because you're already up at speed and you're slowing down. When you're departing a station, you're accelerating on adverse signals. Um, so it's just something to be aware of. So we're constantly using risk trigger commentary driving. We're constantly saying two yellows, next signal's one yellow. Next signal's one yellow, next signal's one yellow. We're constantly repeating that in our head um, as a way of just, just reminding ourselves and maintaining focus and maintaining concentration. Foggy in the tunnel. So we're up to 30, we've shut the power off, we'll see what we get on the next signal. As we're coming over the bridge, looks like we've got one yellow. One yellow and a position one junction indicator. So your junction indicators are numbered one, two and three to the left. Junction indicators to the right are numbered four, five and six. That has stepped up to a green, we're going to take a little bit of power, we're good for 40. Yeah, JCO2, the, the, the sunflower is not to be relied upon. So you do have your sunflower indicator, as, as you rightly identify. Um, I say it's not to be relied upon. It's not, you know, you can look at your sunflower as a reminder as to, to the fact that your, your last AWS indication was cautionary. However, you're not sort of driving by the sunflower, if that makes sense. You kind of, you're using it as a, as a visual aid, but you don't want that to be your, your only method of working. Right, we got a green. Let's get going. We're good for 70. 
Hey, Tornado, it's my birthday today and I got middle and mainline. Happy birthday, bud. Have we got a sound effect for happy birthday? We, we don't have a happy birthday sound effect, but... <laughs> we'll, we'll, give you a, we'll give you a round of applause. Happy birthday, bud. I tell you what we can give you. From, from Dad Rao to you, I'll give you a birthday present. If you see something that doesn't look right, report it to a member of staff Sorry. or text the British Transport Police on 61016. See it, say it, sort it. Yeah, Julian uh, Heap, the, the, I think the AWS system was invented or uh, developed in the 1970s, if I'm being perfectly honest. It's still a really, really robust system. It, it, it works. Um, it, it's fitted to all mainline trains in the UK. It, Whistleboard there, and it, it, it gem generally just does work. It, it's a good system. Crazy Dash, I think the claps are very appropriate. We aim to please, Crazy. We aim to please. Uh, 2.7 miles to Beeston. Happy birthday using the horn. Oh, yeah, we, we can do that. <laughs> Sort of. We can do that. We need more than two tones. Definitely need more than two tones on the horn. 2.2 miles to Beeston. We're doing alright. What have we got? Why are we cancelling? Why are we cancelling? So when the AWS goes off, we do something called push, call, react. Which is where we push the button, we call out the reason we're cancelling, and then we react to it accordingly. Again, that's all part of your, your non-technical skills as being a train driver. Is known as push call react. Got a green. Uh, Sussex Rail Enthusiast, AWS is 1950s technology. It just proves that sometimes the simplest ideas are the best because we're still using it today and it's it's still a robust system and it does it does serve its purpose well. It, it does. As a driver, the AWS system does it works. You know, if we're obviously it's not as good as APT or anything like that, ATP. Uh, ETCS, it's nowhere near as advanced as that. But it does call your attention back when you need it. If you're uh, driving along and your mind's wandering and you're all over the place, driving along on green signals, you know, the AWS going off does bring your attention back into the cab, which is exactly what it's designed to do. So it, it, it's a robust system that works. Sebastian, the class 390 would look epic in Train Sim World 3. You're not wrong, Sebastian. You're, you're definitely not wrong. JCT, I'm very familiar with the AWS. Don't worry, it's stopped me many times. Um, funnily enough, I, I drove passenger trains for quite a few years and I never missed an AWS on a passenger train and I've missed about three or four uh, since I've been driving freight. Normally, because you can't hear the thing because freight trains are reasonably noisy. I think the last one I missed was going through Staines. I had the window open. I was powering up after going around the 20 mile an hour curve at Staines. Um... So I was in full power, the window is open, and then you've got flange squeal as you go around the corner. And yeah, I, I genuinely just didn't hear it go off. Coming into Beeston, let's see if we can get a half decent stop. We're in 50% braking. Yeah, we've overcooked that a little bit, but it's on the platform, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, Wiki 390, what is the longest route you signed? So the longest route I regularly do would be um, Tunbridge to Southampton or Who Junction to Eastleigh. Um, that, that's the kind of longest route that we regularly do. A lot of our routes, are, I'm based out of Tunbridge in the southeast. a lot of our routes are around London. So it takes ages to get anywhere. So although, although you're sort of not travelling massive distances sometimes, it, it can do two or three hours to sort of get up the West London line, round London and stuff like that. It's, it's a nightmare of a place. Too many trains, not enough track. Um, no, t no, Nathan, that is not tea and biscuits. You're not having tea and biscuits for that. Uh, Gregory Allen, what is flange squeal? So, your flange, Gregory, is... Let's see if we can get a decent camera angle. Sorry if I'm teaching anyone how to suck eggs here. Uh, your flange is this bit of the wheel here. You can't see it very well on this. It's kind of the... the 
can't get a decent camera angle. It's kind of the outside bit of the wheel there that sits behind the rail. And as the train goes round a corner, that inevitably rubs against the wheel, rubs against the side of the rail, which is why you get that horrible... Yeah, it sounds something like that. You get you get that kind of that kind of high pitched squealing noise as the train goes around the corner. That's as the flange rubs against the side of the wheel. So the one way one of the ways you can combat that, and please no giggling at the back of the class, is by using something called a flange lubricator, uh, which is basically a grease pot on the side of the track, which puts grease on the inside of the rails to, to reduce the noise as the the train goes around the corner. Anyway, we are off to Nottingham Station. And then we will do a little dark run of about 20 minutes and then we will call it a night. Um. Uh, Andy, shame 6 Yankee 40, 6 Yankee 48 gone back to a shed. Did you ever drive it with 73s? I did once. I had one go on it, Andy. Um, it's really, really annoying because I worked that train a couple of weeks ago. I got rostered it and I was rostered it Monday morning and Friday, Monday afternoon and Friday afternoon. And on the Friday before I was due to work it, they took the 73s off of it and it was back onto 66s. Um, but I did get one go on it, on 73s. Um, I get to drive 73s reasonably often, especially coming into the autumn time of the year. So, uh, yeah. But it's nice to have a 73 with a heavy train on it. Yeah, Kev 5565, it's interesting to watch the driver's actions on the Japanese Shinkansen. They do something... So I've done my commentary driving there, my, my push-call react on the AWS. They do like an enhanced version of commentary driving which is point and call. So you will see them literally sort of salute and point to the signals. That's very very similar to commentary driving in so much as that you are you can acknowledge that a signal was yellow or that you, you're approaching a speed restriction. You can acknowledge that in your head which is one way of doing it but if you can relate a physical action to that. So if you can relate saying something and then hearing that back or if you can relate pointing to it and actually turning that fault into a physical action uh, it remains in your working memory for longer so it's really good practice I there are a couple of locations which are high risk locations for me and I will use the, the point method so um, for example one of the locations I've got is, is on the Chertsey branch coming down to Adelston um, the signal approaching the signal at Adelston station um, I will always point to that and I will say out loud green or one yellow um, because for me, for reasons I won't go into, that's that's quite a high risk location. Uh, because after that signal, you've got basically after that signal, you've got an AWS for a speed restriction. So if you've not recalled what that signal was correctly, uh, because you were away with the fairies, which you know happens to the best of us, um, you're going to look at your sunflower. Your sunflower is going to be black and yellow because you've acknowledged the speed restriction warning. So I always make sure that I'm 100% aware of what that signal was when I went past it. Right, 1.4 miles. Well, we've got a 50 coming up. We're doing 54. Uh, we're on a slight downhill gradient. We'll just let that run for a few minutes. 135 of you lovely people watching tonight, which is fantastic. If you haven't already, guys, please do hit that like button. Consider subscribing. That would be absolutely awesome. Wiki 390, as a train driver, are you able to release what head code you are driving? Yeah, that's not really classified information. I quite happily post in the Discord server or on my social media channels um, what trains I'm driving now and again. Yeah, not not really an issue. I have thought about getting, you see it with truck drivers sometimes. They have like those um, registration plates made up with their names that they have in the window. I have thought about getting something like that made up. But my colleagues would absolutely rinse me for it. So <laughs> something I'm not going to do. But yeah, it'd be pretty cool. Typical Nathan. Yeah, that's a good question. Richard, why do drivers wave to other drivers when passing each other? It's just being friendly. You spend a lot of hours in the cab one yellow, a lot of hours in the cab on your own. It's just, it's just nice to give someone a friendly wave as you go past. Especially if it's one of your colleagues that you know. There's a serious braking for that 25. Right, last signal was one yellow, red ahead. That shunt signal on the floor just doesn't sit right with me. I said it on the last run that just doesn't, yeah, there's, there's something not right about that. Crazy dust, see you later. And we got the 15 coming into Nottingham there as well.
So we, yeah, there we go. The 15 has kicked in. I was just about to say that we've got a 15 ball, but the 15 hasn't happened, but it has just kicked in there. Yeah, Monty Burns are pr pretty similar. Like our bus drivers wave to each other as well. That's a thing, isn't it? Um, drivers of classic cars tend to wave to each other as well. If you're driving a Mini or a Volkswagen Beetle or something like that, or other classic cars, they tend to wave at each other as they go past. So we are going to do, we might see if we can do a night run on the 37. Let's see what timetable services we got with that. Uh, that'd be pretty good, because I do like the 37 on here. And we did want to do a run to Derby, because we haven't been to Derby yet. We've, been, we've done Leicester Nottingham twice um, in the same direction, but we haven't done Derby. So we do need to go back and do that. Uh, Airbus, AV Geek, uh, Airbus AV Geek, I'm doing well. How are you? Uh, Jack asks a really good question there. I'll get my train stopped and then I'll answer your question, Jack. We are red ahead. So stopping at a red signal, we're going to secure the train, which is full service break. We're going to set our DRA on and we're going to go into neutral. Doors are on the right-hand side. So Jack says, are train drivers allowed to let people in who ask for a cab ride? You hear stories of kids who are let into a cab for the journey, but I can't imagine it's too safe. Um, so Jack... It's not necessarily that you can't have people in the cab. It's that you need to be authorised to have people in the cab. So if you wanted, for example, if you wanted to come in my train cab, I'd have to get permission from my manager for you to come into the cab. The chances of getting that is slim because you need to have, you need to be escorted. So my, my duty in the cab is driving the train. If I've got a cab visitor, there will be someone in the cab to facilitate that visitor. So I'll be in charge of driving the train. You'll have my manager or, or someone else there who will be in charge of you as a visitor. So if you've got any questions, you'll be speaking to that person rather than speaking to me, if that makes sense. So that there are protocols and there are things in place in order to do that. Um, but it's, it's certainly something not something that happens very often. Um, but it, it's certainly something that, that, that you can do. Um, having someone unauthorised in your driving cab is, is a bit of a no-no. And it's is potentially disciplinary time uh, if you do that. But not saying it doesn't happen, but it certainly shouldn't happen. It certainly shouldn't happen. And, and any driver that does it is, uh, is risking their job. There are certain drivers known as green cab pass holders who are authorised to have visitors in with them. But it, it, again, it, it becomes a bit of a minefield, um, to be honest with you. Okie dokie, right, I am going to put an advert on so I can earn 20p. So you guys are going to see an advert while I go back to the main menu and load up one more run. So, let me know what advert you get, be really interested. See if you get something relevant. NordVPN or something like that. Okie dokie, Hope hopefully you're back. Hopefully you've had an advert. Because that means I've got 20p if you did. Um, so we go back onto the middle main line. This update is looking really, really nice as well. I, I do hi If you are playing on PC, I do highly recommend you go and pick this up. Let's go in the 37. What times have we got on this? Uh, that's a half an hour run. That's about the shortest one on there. 22.03. Um, drive it from Leicester to Derby, Lich Church Lane. Let's go with that. That's going to be an evening run. Let's do a nighttime run. Um, yeah, we'll have it in July. And we're going to we're gonna do a bit of dark driving just to finish off the stream. Uh, Thomas Cooper, I saw someone at Wakefield ask a 91 if he'd jump in and show, showed his wallet to the driver and climb aboard. Yeah, so normally if you've got... I tell you what, I've actually got one in my wallet. Stay there. Stay there. I'll, sh I'll show you. Right, I'm back. I'll, I'll show you. We've got lots of good questions today. So I've got I've got one in my wallet because I've been out route learning this week. So you will get something. I'm going to sort of cover up various bits and bobs on it. But you can see there, driving cab pass. So I'm not revealing any of the numbers on it for, for obvious reasons. Um, I'm sure everyone in the stream is very nice. But, you know, people do watch these things back. Uh, yes, yeah, so you get something like that driving cab pass. So my one says uh, name bearer department. It's got my company name on it. Um, and that is endorsed for all GTR routes. 
And I have to basically present that with my company ID and that you also need to present a ticket to travel as well, believe it or not. And that authorizes me to go into driving cabs uh, for the purposes of route learning. It's completely down to the discretion of the driver as to whether they want me in the cab. They've got no obligation to let me in at all. Um, that is that is 100% down to their discretion. Um, but yeah. Yeah, Northern Principles don't show it on stream fully. Absolutely not. I'm not going to do that. Alcoholic, I got a Train Sim World 4 advert. Really? <laughs> JCO2, YouTube Premium. No ads. Yeah, I've got Premium as well. So, Wookie, I got a Go Compare and Gas Company advert. Julian got a Euro Car Parts advert. Monty Burns got an advert. Leo Low got the best one. Leo got a Domino's advert. You can't go wrong with a Domino's advert. Right. Oh, hello. Well, this looks very pretty, doesn't it? Engine stopped. Okay, this is going to be interesting trying to get this thing fired up. The sky and the night, the the lighting in the car park there looks absolutely lovely. Uh, Sim racer, I never drove for Connex Southeastern, but I, well, when I started on the railway, Connex had just lost the franchise. It just been handed back to the government, and it was Southeastern Trains. Um, okay, let's see if I can. Let's turn the cab light on. <coughs> Excuse me. See if we can get this thing started. So, master key on. Uh, let's turn the safety systems on as well, which should be up here. Change end switch should be on. Okay. Engine only. Engine start. Oh, that sounds nice. Uh, GSMR is not working on here. Safety systems isolated. Which ones have we got isolated still? Um, TPWS normal. Uh, we need some headlights on. Headlights are on. So I'm going to put the straight air brake fully on. I'm going to recharge the train brake. Uh, we've got a green signal down there. I think we are just about ready to depart. Let me know if you want the game audio up or down, guys, as well, because I do know this is a little bit, um, a little bit loud. So into forward. My brakes are off. We are going to take one notch of power. We're going to let the amp gauge come up, and then I'm going to release the loco brake. And hopefully, all being well, it is moving. We get the cab light turned off, and off we go. Uh, do we have some instrument lights somewhere, though? Uh, light panels up here. Um, route indicator lights on. Tail lights, tail lights. Instrument lights on. There we go. So that's our green offside signal. Let's get a little bit more powering coming out of here. The night lighting on this is, is looking pretty sweet, I must say. Definitely a fan of that. Callum, do you think drivers should be allowed to listen to the radio? I absolutely do, yes. Um, we're not as it goes. People often think you can. You're not allowed to, to have the radio on as you drive along. Um, I personally think you should be allowed to. But yeah, just 100% just my opinion. One yellow. Okay, so we're going to give the brakes a little bit of a rub. We can see the trans... Why has it gone into emergency? What have I done? I've pressed and held the button for too long. 
Come back tomorrow, we'll do it properly, I promise. <laughs> Come on. Hey, what's going on here? Has it given me a TPWS? Why have I got a TPWS break demand? Okay, so for some reason, the, the TPWS has knocked me out. I've got a TPWS break demand. So what we're doing in this situation is we're calling the signaler straight away, completing an RT3185 form, and then acting under the signaler's instructions. I've got absolutely no idea... Um, why I got knocked out though. There was no reason for that at all as far as I was aware. I think my driving was okay. Okay, let's go back into forward. We're in forward. And off we go. Bearing in mind we're still approaching the red. Yeah, no, I've, I've got no idea what that was all about. My, my driving, I thought my driving was okay anyway. Yeah, Julian, I'm, I'm not going to have tea and biscuits for that one because it wasn't my fault. So, uh, we, we're not going to have tea and biscuits for that. Wookie 390 are you allowed to go on your phone whilst at the station or when switching cabs? Yeah, if you're... It depends on your individual company's uh, operating instructions, Wookie, but if you're not... Most companies, if you're not driving, if, if you're not on the train, then you could use your phone. Um, some companies say as long as you're not on the move, then you can use your phone. It, it just does... Literally depends on your individual company's operating instructions. TP175, the all-important question of are you feeling fit to continue? Yeah, you raise a good point there. Um, you do raise a good point there, TP. So after you've had an operational incident like that, like signal's gone back or TPWS activation, one of the things you're going to get asked is are you fit to continue, driver? Do you feel okay to continue? Um, there we go, got a green. 25 across the junction. Yeah, so the signaller will ask you if you're okay to continue. You, you sometimes can feel very shaken up after you've been involved in an incident like that. So that's that's why they do ask that question. And you're you're well within your rights to turn around and say no. Uh, Kevin Graham, what does TPWS do, Richard? Good question, Kevin. So TPWS is Train Protection Warning System. The purpose of TPWS is to bring your train to a stand if you go past a red signal. So if I go past a red signal, it'll fire off, bring my train to a stand. If you approach a red signal or a speed restriction too fast, it will also bring your train to a stand. So it won't necessarily stop you going past the signal, but what it should do is stop your train entering a fouling point or a conflict zone. So you might notice with signals, they're often placed quite a long way before a junction. And the idea of that is that if a train does go past that red signal, it's going to stop before the two lines converge or before it actually gets to the junction. Um, there are exceptions to that rule and there are kind of a lot of rules and signalling regulations surrounding it, but that, that's generally the, the general principles of it. Uh, not all locations are fitted with TP TPWS though, it only tends to be higher, locate, higher risk locations. Right, let's get this thing going. Not that we can see it very well, but it's a beautiful machine, I promise. Uh, we're doing a nighttime run because on the advice of uh, Joe, the British Ace, he said check out the nighttime lighting on this route. Uh, now we've got the, the unofficial mods installed, so uh, we'll certainly be doing that. As we do a little run round to Derby. So um, This was about a half an hour run, so we'll finish this run and then that'll be the end of the stream. Talking of which, we better have another locomotive location livery. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Incidentally, the lighting level that you see out the window is pretty stereotypical. Um, lights on trains are there so you can be seen, not so you can see. So on, on an old loco like this, for example, the Class 73s that I drive, the, the headlight is literally a 60 watt light bulb. Um, so it, the, the lighting is so you can be seen, not so people so people can see you, not so you can see where you're going. So, the, so this is quite realistic. Um, it's where your route knowledge is really, really going to come into play as well. Yeah.
Yeah, um, Grape Juice 116, TPWS won't necessarily take you out if you're over speeding. So when you're approaching a speed restriction, say we're going from 100 to a 60 speed restriction, uh, for example, why am I cancelling? I've got no idea why I'm cancelling my AWS. Let's get some braking. If I'm going from 100 to a 60, the engineers, the track engineers, are going to calculate a braking curve. They're going to work out... Nice HST going past. They're, they're going to work out that what the braking curve is from the 100 down to the 60. And between receiving the warning board and the commencement of the 60, you'll have TPWS loops. And when you go over those loops, it's going to measure your speed. And if you're outside of the braking curve, it will give you an emergency brake application. But it's not going to, it's not, doesn't like constantly supervise the speed of the train. It can only trigger and can only take measurements in the locations where it's fitted. Not like, um, <coughs> excuse me, like TVM or ETCS is obviously constantly monitoring the speed of the train, whereas TPWS isn't. TPWS is a passive system, um, and it's only actually going to, going to, affect you or take you out of locations where the where the loops are fitted. So I don't know if we keep the cab light on or off. I'm not entirely sure. Anyway. Yeah, Sim Racer they are. They absolutely are. Uh, depends on the type of train, but yeah. Class 37 locomotive, they, they absolutely are. Probably not quite as bad because we literally have... It's really weird because you've got... You can see the lighting there shining on the track. But when we go into the cab, you can't see any lighting. And we're cancelling this AWS, and I've got no idea why we keep cancelling the AWS. We've got a yellow signal coming up. Let's get a little bit of break in for that. Okay, so that's one yellow red ahead. Slowing the train down. Okay, locomotive location delivery. Lewis, you are the third one on my screen. Unlucky for some. Number 13. Let's play locomotive livery location. Going to give you box number 13, guys. 10 seconds, please, for that locomotive livery and location. <laughs> uh, we've already done box number 13, haven't we? Yeah, okay. Uh, Pig and Bob, then, number 22. Let's give that one a go. Any ideas, guys? Any ideas on that location? Any ideas on that location? We are still red ahead as well at the moment. Last signal was one yellow. Um, Wookie, do you keep your cab light on at night? Generally speaking, no. Although you can't see it here, um, if you've got the cab light on, you tend to get a lot of glare on the windscreen. Just like in a car, if you're driving along on a dark road and you've got your interior lights on, you get a lot of glare on the windscreen and you can't see out. So no, you, you generally wouldn't have your cab light on. Um, Sim Racer, what speed is good when passing a yellow? It entirely depends on your line speed. So signals in the UK are not a standard distance apart. Um, it, it entirely depends on the speed of the line. So if you're on a two aspect signalling line and the line speed's 100, you could go past the one yellow doing 100, as long as you're braking for the red. If you're on a four aspect area in the middle of London, you might be going past the one yellow doing 15 or 20. There is no, there's absolutely no set speed. It depends on how spaced out the signals are. Mersey Rail 507508 at Wirral says Callum. Sim Racer says Mersey Rail. Lewis says Wirral Station Class 507. Thomas Cooper says Mersey Rail 507203 Sand Hills. Josh Rickwood, are the braking points that are taught on routes different for different types of traction or do you use the same ones regardless of the train you are driving? Uh, that's a good question, Josh. So that'd be down to the... Braking points are not necessarily taught. There aren't set braking points. It's down to each individual driver to establish their braking points. A lot of drivers will use the same braking points because that's just sort of makes makes sense. But yeah, no, that, that, that's that's a pretty good point. But yeah, no, each driver will use their own individual braking points, and that will be adapted uh, to the type of traction that they're driving. Uh, alcoholic, uh, why are signals signal signs not lit up at night like road signs? Not all road signs are lit up at night, though, are they, Alcoholic? If you look at, like, signs in residential areas tend to be lit up. But if you go out in the sticks, a lot of the signs are not. The, the railway signs are retro-reflective, same as, same as road signs out in the countryside. Um, but they, it just doesn't work very well in trains in world. The signs just don't seem to show up. In actual fact, the, the lighting in here is pretty atrocious. Like I said, when we go into the outside view... 
we can actually see that the light is projecting, but inside there's nothing. So I'm, I'm not particularly impressed by that. Yeah, Wookie, you, you do tend to remember where all the buttons are in the cabs and what they do, to be fair. Um, Kevin Graham says 507508 West Kirby or New Brighton. No one's got that location. Uh, yeah, Airbus AV Geek, I have driven that one. Yeah, other than the lighting along the, the route, take the power off because we're speeding a little bit. The actual... Oh, the lighting on the stations... That does look nice. I, I love the yellow hue, which is one of the things that the mods added. The, the yellow hue on the lighting. That that does look really, really nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm down for that. Uh, AW1120, I am dragging A class 375. Uh, so this was one of the loco add-ons, the, the Phoenix Rail class 37, which is a very, very nice add-on. Um, unfortunately, you can't really see it in all its glory because we're, <laughs> we're doing a nighttime run. But yeah, it's really, really nice. Yeah, Matty Meerkat, definitely harder to see your landmarks when driving at night and to, to work out your braking points. It's, to be fair, in real life, it's never normally this dark. You can always see something. This is, this is quite exceptional. Um, but a lot of the time as well, you're driving on sound. So if you go over a bridge or, or through a portal or something like that, or over a set of points, you can hear that noise. So you can hear the whoosh as the bridge goes past or the clickety-clack as you go across a set of points. So sometimes, especially when you're driving in thick fog, you're also relying on, on what you can hear out the window. Uh, Sim racer rear markers on the 375 are on Y, are they? Uh, no, they're not. They're red. Might have just looked white from the angle we saw it at. Callum, tomorrow and Sunday I'm doing the last ever night bus at my depot before it goes to another company, which I'm excited for. Excellent, Callum. So, 9.4 miles to East Midlands Parkway, which is where the stream's going to end. Uh, we're coming towards another station, we'll do another flyby shot. Because the... Yeah, the lighting on these stations is, is, is where it's at. Like I say, not, not impressed with the lighting in the cab, but the, the station lighting does look really nice. It does look nice. Looks white from a distance, Sim Racer. Yeah, sometimes they do, to be fair. Kind of depends on, especially if I'm moving the camera around too fast. Sometimes they do look a bit washed out. Uh, Airbus AV Gate, A AV Geek. Have you ever driven 5 Quebec 60 right Eastly to Wimbledon Park Depots? I'm waiting to see it tomorrow. I wondered what locos are being used. Um, I believe at the moment there's a Colas 37 and Dibso on it, but I, I could be wrong. But last last time I saw that, um, or the set the set that we're using at the moment, it's got a 37 on it. So hopefully that's what you'll get tomorrow. Um, be that or 73 nines. Oh no, my apologies, sorry, 5 Quebec, is that the 701 move? Or 707 move or whatever, so I think that was an IM train. And the IM trains normally run as Quebecs, don't they? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> right, what are we doing? One yellow. Let's think about slowing this train down a bit. Got a 40 coming up as well. Uh, Wookie 390, you get you get used to driving in the dark. Like I say, that this this is exceptional the way it looks at the moment. This this isn't this isn't typical of what you would have in real life at all. Yeah, sim racer, do spotters ever engage you in conversation? Yeah, sometimes they do. Um, if I'm stopped at a red signal at a station and I see see someone on the platform, uh, an enthusiast, I normally open the window and say hi and get chatting. It it breaks it. You know, it's it's nice for them to speak to someone and it breaks up as a red ahead. It breaks up the journey for me as well a little bit so if, I, if I've been sat in a cab for two or three hours by myself and there's someone to talk to it's it's nice for me as well so it's 
Let's get me speed down for that red ahead. It can be really hard in the dark, judging your distance to all signals. So depending on your train operating company's instructions, um, 20 over the magnet. Most freight companies saying that it is 10 over the magnet. It just depends on your, your individual company's operating instructions. And we are red ahead. Which is creeping up to that signal. You can see we're on a slight downhill gradient here as well. So it is starting to run away a little bit. And we're just going to make sure we don't spat it. And we want to be stopping about a loco length away from the signal. And this is where we find out that the game is broke. There is no DRA to set on a class 37. Contact signaler. Denied. Wait for signal to change. Whilst we are waiting, let's have our last round of locomotive location delivery. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Yeah, it's a real shame that you haven't got that view from inside the cab. <coughs> what are we reckoning, guys? What are we reckoning? What do we got for numbers? This is quite unusual. I'm gonna. <coughs> I'm gonna hazard a guess that the game might be broken. No, possibly not. There is there is a train being signalled. We'll give it a few moments to see what happens. If not, we will just uh, end it here. Um, Pig and Bob, you've got the third one on my screen once again. Number 16, my friend. Let's play. Let's play. Locomotive livery location. Give your box number 16. You might get something for the location on this one. Let's go. Ten seconds, guys. Here we go. <laughs> Signal has stepped up to a green. We are off. And there's a train coming the other way there. Was it 158? Yeah. With no passenger lights on. Right, so I, I, I do generally have issues with the... the I, f I think some of the lighting on, on Tracing World is not great. I've mentioned it before a few times, but yeah, that does leave a lot to be desired sometimes. Um, Callum, it's a train. Crazy place. Class 507 Mersey Rail Kirkdale. Rob7904 says Kirkdale. It's not Kirktail. Nobody's got this location yet. Nobody's got the location. Let's drop a little bit of brake in there. We've got a speeding a little bit. Hunts Cross says Douglas. Grape Juice says Kirktail. Wookie 390 says Kirktail. Forty through. This is Loughborough, I believe. I do the mandatory outside view on the stations because that's pretty. Matty Meerkat thought it may be a hard one. Grape juice, will anyone get this? I, I think I have progressively become better at hiding the locations. 
Thomas Cooper says Omskirk. It's not Omskirk. I tell you what, guys. I I I am gonna I'm gonna do you all a favour now. I'm gonna give you a box. Let's play locomotive livery location. I'm gonna give you number five. I'm gonna give you top right because I think this one might. Help. <laughs> that gives you any more clues to what it might be. <coughs> Kevin Graham, Southport. Rob7904, is it not Bank Hall? Where's our 75 coming up? Let's get this thing going. Let's get some 7, some 37 fresh. Here we go. <laughs> I, I think they've got it. I, I, I think the location has been revealed. Let's play locomotive livery location. Yeah, just needed that one box there to get the location down, guys. I, I, I think it's gone mad. Everyone has recognised that now. Let, let's press the button. It's time to reveal today's locomotive livery location. Yeah, thank you very much, Matty Mika. That is, of course, 508 Tyler Weir Metro at... Is it Tyler Weir or is it Mersey Rail? I, I, might, I might have got it wrong. <laughs> I think it's Mersey Road, isn't it, at Chester? Yeah, well well done to everyone who got that right at the end. Now, that was a really good one. Thank you very much, Matty Meerkat, for sending that in. Don't forget, guys, if you do want to send any in, you are more than welcome to do so. Um, you can you can send them via my Discord server, which you're more than welcome to join. You'll find the link in the description. Or you can send them to me and follow me on my social media channels, which are on the screen for you right now. Okay, guys, I'm going to make the executive decision, although we haven't made it yet. We, we've got about another 20 minutes running along in the dark like this. Um, which, to be honest with you, I think is pretty tedious and pretty boring. So I, I'm going to take the executive decision to end the stream halfway between stations, which I know is something we don't normally do. Just like that there. So we were going to have an event in the Discord server tonight. Uh, we were going to do a Tom Scott, two of, the, two of these people are lying type thing. Um, but there's a couple of issues with that, so unfortunately we couldn't do that. We were then going to do Farming Simulator, but my internet's been running ridiculously slow. Um, and it's on about 40% download. It's unfortunately, we can't do that. So we are starting to do a few. They're being organised by Northern Princess Productions. We are starting to do a few sort of uh, additional games in the Discord server using the Discord stages. Uh, we're going to be doing some flight sim and some bits and bobs over there. They, they won't be on the main YouTube channel. We're going to be doing those in the Discord. Um, but you're more than welcome to join the Discord. It's completely free to join the Discord. And you'll find an invitation link in the description below. If you want to join in with the multiplayers, you're more than welcome to on, on those sorts of games. That would be absolutely great. So the next thing we do stream-wise will be after I come back off holiday in a couple of weeks. But we are doing, talking of multiplayer games, we are doing Euro Truck Simulator. Um... We are doing Euro Truck Simulator Sunday night in the Discord server. We're going to do a convoy, and everyone is welcome to join us. So, if you haven't already, guys, please do hit that like button, consider subscribing, that would be absolutely brilliant. If you are a PC player and you have the middle and main line, click the link in the description, go and download the mods. They are absolutely brilliant. They do add a lot to the game, um, and I would highly recommend them. I'm going to press that button there. Thank you very, very much to all my channel members for your support. It's absolutely brilliant. And, of course, all the um, everyone from moderating tonight has been there, RT, and I shall see you in the next one.